come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast coming at you every Saturday night from a dank, dark basement. And you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Pod Bay podcast addict stitcher i think i said that Twice. tune in and more you can also find us on facebook facebook.com slash saturday freak show uh on twitter at sat freak show you can email us saturday night freak show at yahoo.com or you can find us on instagram we're saturday night freak show we're a bunch of movie fanatics Movie Maniacs. Oh, I see what you did there. I had to reach uh, for that one. Yeah. should have came first. Yeah. But it's yeah. okay. It's okay. Uh, that was a late to that one. I was like, <laughs> Colin's talking, Colin's talking. But I'm just trying to gather myself. Maniacs. Gotta. It's but, funny. <laughs> Keep doing what you do. Love your work. <laughs> yeah, I'm digging deep with that one. Uh, the uh, But these people that you're about to listen to. These, these people. Are the these radio, people. internet radio superstars. Starting with Michaela, Holly, Sean, and I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by Sean. Sean, did <laughs> what did we watch tonight? We watched Maniac Cop. Maniac Cop Maniac. from the year 1988 and directed by uh, William Lustig. Mm hmm. Very good. I'm glad that you did yes. your homework. I did a little bit of homework. He did the bare minimum. Yep. Yeah. What do we know William Lustig from? Maniac. Yeah. yeah. He had a, there was a theme Not in his work. Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. That's about it. But mostly Maniac, yeah. Maniac Cop 2, and Maniac Cop 3, Badge of Silence. Oh. No, 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 no. So it's a great. Yeah, but uh, Bill Lustig went on to have a career. Oh, you know him well, well actually, enough to call him Bill. Oh, yeah. No, Bill. No, 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 Bill now. Bill. Old Bill. Right, I got a couple of interesting facts. One I had to look up, the other one I know. But okay. the one I had to look up, he is the nephew of Jake LaMotta, the boxer. Shut up. He's in this movie, isn't he? Jake, Jake LaMotta? LaMotta? Yeah, no. Jake LaMotta he's dead, no, he's think, dead. Yeah. Yeah. And this, was he? Yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. he's Raging Bull, right? Or yeah. Maybe it was Jake LaMotta Jr. Was there a that could be. There might have been a Jake There might have been a junior. junior. I've read something. That would explain why Lamata. he would be in this movie. Yes. Yeah. If he's related to the okay. director. Okay. Uh, but Bill Lustig also... Um, like I f became aware of him because he was uh, with Anchor Bay. Like this is so during you know the the DVD startups of the two thousands, right? Uh, Bill Lustig was with Anchor Bay and acquired all of these like Italian and European uh, horror films and released them through Anchor Bay. Mm -hmm. And somehow he was able to keep the rights to these. And he became friends with Dario Argento, and that's I think why a lot of people know Argento now is because Lustig oh. brought all of his stuff over and licensed Interesting. it. Interesting. He for he left Anchor Bay and formed the company Blue Underground. So that is his uh, oh, distribution. Blue yeah. Okay. So he's the CEO of Blue Underground, keeping cult cinema alive. That's what he does now. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Out. They put Love out some it. nice DVD and Blu-ray sets. Yeah. Uh -huh. They just put out the Stendhal syndrome as we write the, or record this. I think as, the, as it is as written, as, written. Reader, <laughs> as you know. As it is well, written. you know, for our yeah. transcriber, for, for yeah. one, uh, as it is written, transcribe. let it be. It's going to be a book. Yeah, and then it's going to be brailled, right, Sean? It definitely, it's got to be. <laughs> it might be brailled for before our, it's a book. I'm not too sure. We might for just go that blind route. audience. Because yes. how else are they going to enjoy this? So you had never seen Maniac Cop before this evening. Never seen. I don't it. Think, Always heard about it, but never seen it. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. All three of you. Have. No, never nope, seen it. Never seen nope. it. And I came to it new last year. I mean, the movie's been around forever, but yeah, uh, yeah I, I think it was because for me it was you know because I saw Maniac and I do like that movie, mm -hmm. but it's really this gritty New York kind of. Uh, just because it was Maniac Cop, I'm like, man. <laughs> See, <laughs> there was a problem I had with this movie. Like, like up until I had watched it, it, was like I would always be talking about the movie Maniac to people, and they'd be like, oh, Maniac Cop with Bruce Campbell. I'm like, no, no, not that. No. Take the cop so, off of that. How many people do you talk like, to or just like Maniac Cop with Bruce Campbell? Is that really like, a thing that happens a well, lot? It's one of those movies that like is like people have heard of it, mm -hmm. but they don't know anything oh, yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. They've yeah, heard that's of what it. This movie yeah, is right now. Yeah. So, oh, I've heard of that. And it's Never one of those it. that yeah. like is at like the used DVD stores all the time. Like yeah. this is one of those that's always on the shelf there. So I think people are just kind of aware of it and think they know about it when they really don't. Yeah. But th they conflate those two movies all the time. They're like, oh, yeah. 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 And of a lot course, of chins in that movie. Yeah. And you look mm -hmm. them up and they're by the same director. Yeah. Uh, they're very but, similar movies. But this movie <laughs> is a, uh, it, it, you know, people should know about it, at least in, in our, you know, the horror uh, genre of the circle, people who are interested in these kind of movies because it brings together two titans 
of Titans. horror. <laughs> well, are they? Yeah, well, yeah, they, yeah are. they kind of yeah, are. For sure. yeah. I think for so, sure. because I think it's so. like, you know, if you were a reader of Fangoria or Rue Morgue or whatever, you see these names, I think, mm-hmm. more than you see, like, Brad Pitt or Tom Cruise. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I think a, a, a good... These are the stars. Yeah, a good tell is... A na- there are two names that have come up on this show a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's oh, a good sure. tell. Yeah. Indeed. We might have to put uh, Tom Atkins on the... Saturday Night Freak Show Hall of Fame. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. I think so. Oh, definitely. He needs definitely. To be up there. Yeah. We need to start a wall. Yeah. 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 We can get that neon thing and put it on yes. the wall. Did you buy it? Pictures around. Yeah. No, no. Buy it. Uh, okay, call me. Okay. The Freak Fine. Show Hall of Fame. I think mm-hmm. this is a good idea. We this is a good idea. We should. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what, what, what should the requirements be? We have to at least watch what? At least three. At, at least, least three. It feels like at least three. I was going to say five, but. That's a wow. lot for anybody around here. So we'll say three movies. We'll say three. three. Three's good. We've Stallone's in. Three. Stallone yes. is in. Stallone <laughs> is in. <laughs> we've, we've, uh, and Charles top. Band. <laughs> Definitely Charles Stuart Band. Gordon. Over the, <laughs> Stuart Gordon. Over the Top Cobra. What was that? Well, actually, Demolition we've done four. Man. Demolition Man, yeah. Over the Top Man. Cobra, and then and Tango and, and Tango Cash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he should be wow. the first inductee into this yeah. Hall of Fame. God, this is like, like the Five Timers Club. I was going it's like the Five Timers Club. Yeah. All right. Here it is. So it's Tom Atkins, the star of uh, such films as Night of the Creeps, which mm-hmm. we did yes. here. You mm-hmm. know him from Creep Show. He was the dad in mm-hmm. uh, Halloween 3. And Drive Angry. And, and Drive uh, Angry, yeah. Early John Carpenter stuff, like Escape mm-hmm. from New York in the Fog. But he's teamed up in this movie with the co star, the female cop. <laughs> the mighty Bruce Campbell. The mighty yeah. Bruce Campbell. If chins could kill Bruce a Campbell, young, yes. A young Bruce Campbell. Well, yeah, this is yeah. the year after Evil Dead 2. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and sometime before Army of Darkness. Good four or five years before Army of wow. Darkness. So, yeah. yeah, he's yeah. not he's not popular enough yet to be like uh, Bruce Campbell versus Maniac yeah. Cop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, he said he he's even said he's not a fan of this movie, and no. he took it. Only I can't he imagine work. why. Yeah, I yeah. can't imagine he would be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, he <laughs> said at the beginning he thought it was a solid thing, but I think he said in yeah. recent years he's like, yeah, it's not so good. I mean, you know. Well, we'll we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll dive in. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. Why not? Yeah. It would be known as a solid thing. Yes. And uh, also in the movie's pedigree is uh, Larry Cohen, the writer and producer. Larry Cohen uh, might be known to you from uh, if you're familiar with a film series called It's Alive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Little yep. Mutant Any, Babies. They even remade thing. that, too. I guarantee you've seen the cover for it. Oh, Probably. Yeah, it's absolutely. like a crib or a pram. Right? Oh, yeah, a pram. The, the, yep, that, yeah. it's a, okay. That, the Mutant that Babies. Sense. We've talked about that before. With yeah, Michael yes. Moriarty. Michael Moriarty's in a lot of his movies like Q, the Winged Serpent. Nope. You never said heard of this one? No. Mm-mm, they find no. like this he's Oh shit, here's a new movie. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you the winged serpent. It's uh they in New York uh, there's this giant like Mexican uh like deity, this gigantic snake. Sold. Like, there's a I'm giant sold. Mexican All right. dragon. I'm like, yeah, I yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, yes. Yes. Quetzalcoatl or whatever the what? fuck his name oh, is. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. And it's like roost there, you know, uh it's parked up on top of a skyscraper. Sure. And Michael like Moriarty's gar- this like a, bum oh. who figures out that it's up there and like blackmails the entire city because it's tearing heads off. What? Of okay, stuff. I'm in. It. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Do it. <laughs> Colin, you don't gotta keep yeah. selling for mine. This is up to you. <laughs> <laughs> to, for Q. Q, the wing. He also did uh, God told me to, where a bunch of people are killing people saying that God told me to. But you might know him. So this is like a documentary. Straight yeah, to the point. yeah. I was gonna say, oh, yeah. that's a little too real. I don't think yeah. I need to see that. Yeah. I almost forgot the stuff. The stuff. Yeah, and mm. uh, we'll leave off some of the 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 the, the reprehensible stuff, like you know. Return to Salem's Lot, uh, uh, but he also wrote uh, Phone Booth, the Colin right. Farrell movie. And, oh, uh, that movie keeps one. coming back. Holy really shit, does. that's like the third time in the past month we've referenced another that movie. Esque movie, Cellular, with, Cellular, uh, Kim Basinger, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Chris Evans, yeah. Chris Evans, and mm-hmm. uh, Eric Christian Olsen. There it is. Yeah. yeah. So that's your history lesson for tonight there on the Saturday Night Freak Shake. You should look all these people up because they are all, I think, individually, like, you know, part of this, uh, we're big deals, you know, mm-hmm. in the horror community. And I should horror be films. Yeah. And that's why we bring Maniac Cop to the Freak Show. So why'd you bring Maniac Cop to the Freak Show? <laughs> <laughs> because I've never seen it before. And I figure with a movie called Maniac Cop, you have to see it. Plus, rumor has it that it's getting remade. Yeah. Nicholas Winding Refn, mm-hmm. the director of Drive and Only God Forgives, and Neon Demon is producing, I believe. Yes, he's producing. Hell yes. And somebody else is I'm directing. sold already. Wow. I'll go watch it. That is going to be a different movie. Yeah. 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 In, in, in a good way. <laughs> in a very good yeah. way. But I I'll think. watch it. Yeah. Like, if they make I'll, this movie, I'll... I'm, I'm in. So Gosling's going to be Bruce Campbell's role, right? Really? Was like, there an official poster for it? 
there was uh, like a sales con sales uh, art. So I think it was like maniac cop coming out of the city and like built out a skyscraper, you know, uh, like yeah. a neon. I think, that, yeah, but it's probably like based off one of the older posters for yeah. this movie because I've seen it before. I think Winding Refn like purchased, it was maniac cop. He, he bought the rights to maniac cop, Witchfinder general. And what have you done to Solange? Uh, <laughs> Jala movie says he was going to remake. Excellent. Them all. Yeah. Damn. I'm so, I'm so behind that. All of that. Just buying rights. To yeah. Shit. Well, well, and you know, if, if this maniac cop version comes out that he's making Mondo will definitely be behind it so there'll oh, be yeah. awesome posters and nice know, soundtrack post- yeah exactly poster. so I mean, you know cool. yeah. it'll be a nice production mm-hmm. start to finish yeah. if he's attached so is maniac cop ripe for a remake is this the type of movie that yeah uh, right yes. now in this cl- political climate yes yeah. it is prime absolutely as i the, think the cop as why so holly the the cop killers. You can't just say yes, and I have an answer. <laughs> the whole, well, I mean, the whole movie is about you know violent cops and cop killers and the cop killers the, the are, war are, are the war between cops. Both the, cops. the war between people killing cops just because they're scared, cops killing people for no reason. The whole so shebang. So in the new uh, Maniac Cop, what's the angle? Is it the same as this movie? Is it we get? First of all, what is the angle of this movie? I mean, we get. Uh, there is a maniac cop in this movie, but there's some question around it. Because the first, like, I will say two-thirds of this movie, it's like... It's, it's like it's a, a different thriller. movie. It's a different movie. Yeah. It's a different like a, movie. It's supposed yeah. to be like a mystery thriller as to what's going on. Because, you know, you got uh, Bruce Camp. They introduce a lot of characters in this. You get a cop who is shows up in the middle of the night and starts killing, quote-unquote, innocent people. And it's, you know, they keep him in shadow. They don't show who he is. And then they introduce later on in the movie Bruce Campbell as obviously a cop who's having marriage problems. That has a very everything. similar jawline to right. the yeah. mystery Sims. cop, yes. Sims thing. Yeah, because the maniac cop and the, or, or, the, yeah. the maniac yeah. cop yeah. that we see in the beginning is always in shadow. Always in shadow. To keep mm-hmm. his identity, uh, you know, secret, mm-hmm. which is always in these movies a technique to say, like, okay, you, know, you put a mask on the guy, you keep him in shadow. It's because it's somebody else in the cast. Right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, how much of the, how, what did you know about this movie before? I mean, as far as synopses, you know, uh, before you saw it tonight, I knew nothing. I, I knew nothing. I knew okay, nothing. well, this yeah. is like the best way to go into it, then, yeah. right? Because you... I knew he was from what I read. It's like a cop comes back from the dead and starts killing people. Mm. Like I, I was, I'm like, he's supposed to be dead, isn't he? Like I thought he was a return from the dead cop. Mm-hmm. Which... So when you're watching, you're like, wait, 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 did I get sold the wrong movie? Right, which is kind of <laughs> like. It's kind of iffy, is like even if they deliver that in this movie, because mm-hmm. you know, as we we'll talk about in a little bit. But yeah, that's uh, that premise is not entirely accurate, mm-hmm. kinda. Well, there's a cop. So the cop, the the maniac cop, is out there. Witnesses see this guy mm-hmm. murdering people in cold blood. Apparently, yeah. he has a, he's a large man with you know uh, brute strength. Yeah. yeah, killing these people with his hands. Some Jason Voorhees level like grip yeah. strength. Yeah, like, just chokes people out. Ragdolls. No problem. Yeah, and mm-hmm. this becomes a PR nightmare for the police mm-hmm. department of New York City because. Uh, well, Tom Atkins is a detective who believes that the cop, the murderer, is like a on-duty, uh, you know, current duty cop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think he gets over the idea that it's like an off-duty, you know, like a retired cop pretty quick. Because he, yeah. he figures out that the, the cop is, you know, wherever they'll stake out an area, the cop will show up somewhere else. Uh-huh. So, ergo, he's getting information from someone inside the department. So, right. it's a current, you know, uh, enlisted officer. Mm-hmm. But why, I mean, like a lot of the, the PR nightmare I was talking about comes because Tom Atkins takes it upon himself to talk to a reporter. Do you understand why he did that? No. Not particularly. The, because, are you talking about the make it bigger than AIDS scene? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah make which it is what Tom <laughs> Atkins says to the reporter, God, word for word. Just, me. AIDS just, was yeah. a big deal in, in the 80s. Right. 88 need, was the same year as that was Angels in America. Like, you know, yeah. I mean, right. it was yeah. peaking, I think. In, it, yeah. In That's not what's baffling about it. No. What's baffling well, about it is, is his like insensitivity towards that situation. Yeah, he's but just like fuck those people with AIDS. This is more important. <laughs> well, that's like Tom Atkins' characters in pretty much every everything. Movie. He just says, yeah, yeah. like we he's need the very, top five quotes. He's very blunt. Under he's very crass about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thrill me yeah. will obviously be number one. Yeah. yeah, and then make it bigger than AIDS will be like number yeah. four. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought he said something else that we were. Oh, it was the exchange between him and the older. Oh cop. yeah. 
uh, Conan's yeah. dad, William Smith, <laughs> was like, what are you, a fucking cop? Yeah, I'm a fucking cop. Yeah. Well, yeah. fuck you. And then yeah, it cuts. Yeah, fuck are you a fucking cop? Like, yeah, I'm a fucking great. cop. <laughs> It's like, well, we're done here. Cut out of it. Yep. That's that was that, yeah, that was leave. legit my favorite moment of dialogue in the entire movie. Fuck you. Fuck you. That's pretty great. But does you, that go you. underneath the uh, the Tom Atkins like dialogue? Well, you're gonna have to put the dialogue. You know, I think on our Tom way. Atkins bingo, that can be a square. Yeah. For sure. How do you Tom play Atkins Tom Atkins bingo? bingo? Uh, free space well, is a trench coat. Yeah, your free space is a trench coat because that's that's the given. Yeah. Um, you also have a dramatic phone call. That's another space. Mm-hmm. One liner. Uh, mm-hmm. One liner. Yeah. Smoking. Drinking. Yep. 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 Yeah, that's all we got so far. Indiscriminate sex. Indiscriminate with, with, sex, yeah. female uh, <laughs> uh, lead yeah. in the movie. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Halloween 3, I'll get that real quick. We need to call the Marines. <laughs> yeah. I think needs to be a space in there. Well, there always seems to be a scene, too, in the, you know, where he busts into a room. Like, the doors open, like saloon doors. Tom Atkins mm-hmm. walks in and is like, okay, tell me what you got. Or the thrill me or, uh, like, yeah. you know, yeah. hit me or something. He does a lot of reading, too, it seems like. Reading, sleeping, smoking, drinking. Con- these are all kind of Confrontation with police chief and or commissioner. Yeah. <laughs> Could yep. be one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Playing outside the lines. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anytime that happens. Yep. <laughs> get a space. Uh, yeah, you'll fill up your card real quick. Yeah, I think so. We can play a blackout I round, play, I think. I say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now. Great. <laughs> we gotta start this. Well, we can do this. Maybe if we get enterprising. In Instead of bingo, it's yeah. gonna be Atkins. Yeah. Yeah. Atkins yes, oh my yeah, god, yeah, yes, yeah, there you go. Well, if we get really enterprising, maybe we'll post this on Facebook or Instagram. That we'll make the little yeah, time Atkins. You remind me of this tomorrow when I remember things. Yeah, yeah. I'll go to work on Monday and I'll make it. Make sure to tell Sober Sean. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for, for reasons that we can't, uh, entirely decipher, he goes to the press, the cops want to keep this secret. He yeah. goes to the press and then this has the effect of turning the entire city of New York's populace, uh, into, uh, it makes them afraid it of makes everybody afraid of cops where yeah. we see like, a in a scene where a woman's being pulled or her car's broken down yeah, yeah. and a cop's coming to, well, we don't know. She's he's like, coming to help her. The oil. 80,000 miles. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Smoking like crazy. Yeah. And she shoots and kills this cop. And it yeah. was kind of around this point in the movie because I don't think we'd introduced the Bruce Campbell character yet. No. Where it was like. Not a full reveal yet. We had seen like, you know. Or no, we hadn't we well, hadn't got so. him getting dressed, gearing Be- up scene no, yet. No, because they did a scene where it was like it has to be someone inside the force. And then it cut to Bruce Campbell. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Right. Oh, getting, okay, this like, is the guy plus, we're introducing. Oh, right. yeah, his, and then parallel it with him getting dressed it, and ready to go. His wife everything. suspected him, and they yes. wouldn't show his face. Right. Yeah. That, oh, that were, that scene was so that, good at building suspense, though. Like she's like she's super tweaked out and weird, and you're like, yeah. all right, something's wrong with this lady. Yeah. And she's like questioning him, but he's being super weird about his responses to her, mm-hmm. and like really distant. But he's also like gearing up in his police uniform, but you don't see his face. You just see like a shot of his belt and a shot of his hands, mm-hmm. and like him and, walking like, his waist, walking in front of the camera, a and, vague profile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they knew yeah. what they were doing when they put that scene together. Yeah. Obviously throwing, you know, doubt on that character as right. they introduce him. But that's also a scene where they just talk about um, – it's, it's not well written because they're people who just talk about who they are and what they're doing at this moment. You mean exposition people? Basically. I mean, yeah. they, it is. It's just, yeah. just like we are having a fight and our marriage is not good. Yeah, you may that's, well have just that's been the saying thing. That after, yeah. after they showed Bruce Campbell's face, then it just got really it weird. Really dropped and dropped off. Yeah. yeah. It just got awkward yeah. and not like, a well-written kind of way. <laughs> you say that every night. It's like, what? Yeah. yeah. She doesn't want It's like, well, you are a cop and your job is dangerous, you so it would make asshole? sense that she would say that all the time. Jesus. Well, it's also odd that she's getting phone calls, uh, like, right after he leaves for work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then she gets a phone call saying, He's going out again. again. Yeah, he's going as out again. As soon as the door shuts. Like, yeah. as soon as he shuts yeah. the door. He's not even down the hallway yet, and she's getting that phone call. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is layering in, like, I mean, at this point, I just remember watching the movie, I'm like, A, the stuff about, like, you know, cops being, you know, or the, the public opinion turning against the cops, they have, like, a montage, I think somebody's in the bar watching a bunch of people, you know, saying, like, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, well, cops are shooting people, you know, it's like, we gotta watch out. And cop comes towards me. Hey, I, I go the other street. way, yeah. yeah. I'm telling my daughter not to go anywhere near a cop, and I mean, it's like, really... It's like this has entered like a, you know some kind of a, you know social commentary. It has that has somehow come back around to present day. Yeah, I was yeah. like, this is this is really hitting home right now. Do you think at the like, time though that was like a reaction to like the Giuliani cleanup the, of I think New so. York, Bruce Bruce I think so. the, the police yeah. brutality, the stop yeah. and frisk kind of stuff, yeah. and all that? Yeah, mm-hmm. was that that yeah. in the eighties? Yeah, well, I don't know when he cleaned it up. He cleaned it up, I think. 
it was like late eighties, early nineties. Felt like yeah. it was nineties, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm hmm. not entirely sure of the dates, but I was, yeah, I was pretty young then. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. <laughs> but it kind of sets up this this thing, and then. Uh, and then it, you know it's adding this these extra layers and extra characters is like okay now we've got a cop with a marriage problem mm-hmm. you know his wife follows him and it turns out he's not going to work he's going to his f shack you know in the motel yeah. where he's boning another <laughs> that uh, was a nice a reveal officer. though i thought that was an interesting reveal that like like because i was like it's gonna be like i did not see that coming honestly oh, yeah? i was like no i, totally I didn't did. i was like i was like fuck i was like so on board with this movie so like fuck yeah bruce campbell's gonna be choking the shit out of people in this movie and I, was so, I, was, I was a little disappointed when like with it those was wide bruce yeah, campbell eyes like yeah like it was a little and like the crazy face that he makes yeah, yeah. so i was a little disappointed yeah. when like it was just that he was cheating on his wife i was I like that's it crazy yeah. i was like oh that uh, sucks when he goes to the hotel you're just like oh, oh, oh all yeah, right yeah, we you're just running the middle scumbag yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, that's the thing, yeah. right? Well, you're just saying scumbag. It's like yeah. it creates a morally compromised character, like right off the bat oh, when yeah. you meet the guy. So it's like, does that mean, you know, if he's morally compromised in the way that he's cheating on his wife, can this also mean that he's a, you know, potentially a serial killer? I don't think the movie entertains that idea for very long. No, it, seems it doesn't. Like immediately thereafter, she's targeted by the maniac cop. As soon as she leaves, as soon as she leaves, she yeah. rounds the corner and boom. Yeah, the new yeah. man, yeah. Yeah. And then the, her body is found in the F Shack room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like how you just add F Shack. I like how you're just censoring you yourself. Could, you could just say motel room, but no. Mm. Yeah. Or F Shack say room. fuck, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could you're just allowed, not censor to yourself. It's all right. We've said worse. Yeah. I'm sure it's going to, yeah, a lot more. Worse is going to happen as the night goes on. Mm-hmm. But so this basically then points the entire department at uh, Bruce Campbell as the suspected. Maniac right. cop. You know, you can play a drinking game tonight, listener. Let's do so. However many times we say the words maniac cop, I think is a good uh, 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 chance to take it to Sean's leg. Sean, <laughs> put the tequila yeah. away. Right. Sean. Yeah, Sean. I'm, I'm in on this if everyone else oh, is. Yeah. Right. No, we're on. all going to no. die. Come on, let's no. dedicate ourselves to our art. <laughs> <laughs> no? Yeah. Fine. It'll be incomprehensible by the end of the show. So, uh, although that might be fun. The... Uh, <laughs> I'm also struck by the the idea that like it doesn't take a whole lot of evidence. And this is all circumstantial, right? Sure. That they everything is circumstantial in this movie. They have no yeah, they, they have no, no case, no. Gun, yeah. no real evidence, no literal smoking gun either. I mean that that <laughs> yeah. remind me to bring it back around when we get to the end of the movie. How there's no evidence because I have a point to make on that as well. But yeah, there's <laughs> put really a pin nothing. In that. Yeah, put a pin in that for right now. But yeah, there's really nothing. I mean, you know, his wife dies, so uh, you know he's. It's all witness testimony, it's all right? It's circumstantial, yeah. but it is like it's circumstantial, but it fits mm-hmm. kind of like if you look. And they're kind of desperate to find a suspect for all of this, so they can you know knock off. Like I said, they're having a PR nightmare at this point. So I mean, they'll take him in for right now until you know either something better happens or they charge him for it. That's what doesn't make sense. Is that like if it's such a PR nightmare for them that they need to solve it so quickly? Why did Tom Atkins make it that way in the first place? That's what right? doesn't make any sense. And even like one of the funniest things to me is like there's uh, somebody's driving up and there's a uh, the radio is going off and it's like and later on tonight we'll have an interview with Detective whatever McRae. A person who said he was not allowed to speak to the press. Yeah. And I'm just like, what, what, what is, what yeah, is happening here? Yeah. It's so weird. He's if anything, like, he's the maniac cop going to the press and creating this whole fucking problem in the first place. Yeah, yeah he creates his own problem. Yeah. yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. I know. I'm trying to think back. There were like two or three scenes where he was trying to implore his you know, superiors that you have to do something. I think it was because they're saying it's not. They were th- the the brass was thinking that this wasn't. Or they just wanted to keep it quiet. Sure, but weren't really looking into it. Yeah. He was like, "Well, I'm going to put it out there, so they're going to be forced to look into it. Maybe, uh, right? I mean, but you're the only endangering the lives of all of these. But officers. he ends up getting more people killed. Yeah, yeah. that way. Yeah. Yeah. you know, as yeah. as Martin Riggs would say, that's very thin. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Tom mm-hmm. Atkins, that one's on you. He's, yeah. he's haphazard. He just <laughs> yeah. goes off half cock. He's really he's shitty like, at his I'm job. Tom Atkins. Yeah. Yeah. He <laughs> <laughs> he's top build in this movie, too. Uh, yeah. He yeah. is. Which is a surprise. Have we mentioned the Above Bruce Campbell? 
Because, oh, he was. Yeah, he was Campbell's above not Bruce Tom Campbell. Tom Atkins has, well, I was has got his pedigree. <laughs> I mean, he at, deserved at this, so. okay, yeah, at I this wasn't point, alive at the time, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know, you know, how much two Evil Dead movies carries against True. all of Tom Atkins' right. career to I think this point. Evil Dead was a big deal on video, so it mm-hmm. would have been, you know, 88, but mm-hmm. probably before it even made it onto tape, Evil Dead 2. But Tom Atkins has been around forever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And his mustache longer. Yeah. But, but I would say, you know, again, I don't... He was born a mustache. He grew into a man. <laughs> the mustache exists first, and then he kind of grew around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chicken, have we chicken ever of seen the egg you? mustache of Tom Atkins. Yeah. I was going to ask if we've ever seen... Uh, uh, the Fog. Uh, yeah, The Fog. He doesn't have a mustache in The Fog. Oh, God, yeah. I can't watch that now. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing yeah, that, I no cannot mustache. watch it. Do you have a mustache as the kid's dad in Creepshow? It feels He's like a mustache did. and everything, but the yeah, phone. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's in his contract, just like the trench coat. Yeah, yeah basically. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure he's jean jacketed in the fog, but what, what have you? Yeah, he had it's to the grow into the look. trench coat. Yeah, because <laughs> I think he wears a trench coat in like Drive Angry. Or, yeah, he does. Bloody he does. He does. He's Drive Angry. He, Drive Angry. Right. Yeah. It, was he a cop in Drive Angry? Is he like a? Yeah, he was. A, he? He if was he's a cop, cop, he's got to wear a trench uh-huh. coat. Like, yeah. <laughs> he was a cop in uh, My Bloody Valentine, but I think he had yeah. the actual. You know the furry collar cop. Oh, really? uh, cop oh I think there. he did. I think yeah. he did. That's a good that 70s sheriff coat. bracket. Coat. Right. Yeah. 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 So with the entire department turned against Bruce Campbell, yeah, I suppose we should talk about who the actual maniac cop is because you may know him. We are aware. Oh, Tom Atkins figures out through doing his own detective work mm-hmm. that the woman who is helping the maniac cop. Is in the department. She's down in records or yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. And it turns With their out one that, computer apparently. Well, this is 1988. That thing probably cost a fortune and could put you on the moon. <laughs> I mean, That's, true. Could. That's true. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> Guaranteed. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it turns out. I mean, this is some interesting detective work for the yeah. movie. I mean, if you're doing like this kind of you know thriller mystery thing and trying to reveal this like peel back the onion. Yeah. You know they, what's yeah, actually they do happening. That pretty good. Yeah. She. Was once the girlfriend of a cop that who we only hear about. Yeah, Matt um, Cordell. Matt yeah. Cordell. So who's he? Who plays him as well? I mean, he well, was. He was. He was kind of a maverick. No, no, not maverick. He was just kind of a, a, a no, quote unquote superstar cop, cop yeah. at mm-hmm. that point. But he was. You know, he was rough. He was like the Dirty Harry or Basically. the Marion Cobretti, right? Yeah, uh, yes, there it is. He was yeah. the cop that connected all. He just triggered he, happy cop. You know, he did right. what he had to do. He went with all he had. He got the bad guy. His ways were not the most straight yeah. up, but he got the bad guy. Yeah. I'm Until he got can he got set up. He got sent down the up the river down the river. Which way do you go when they send up you up the, the river? river? Up the river. No, I don't even remember river. what he did that got him. I don't remember. I, I had a hard time following that story. So, honestly, I think they like got him on a like a bunch of that stuff. They're just oh, like, that was the okay. All right, so here's the thing. We watched the version tonight. <laughs> oh uh, God, here we go. Uh, Can we on just... accident, right? Uh, 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 <laughs> but thank God we did. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I'm pretty sure we saw fan made clips inserted in this movie, guys. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm like pretty positive. Deleted scenes from the VHS have made their way into the. But we those deleted tonight. scenes had the same two people in one room every single time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it very easily could have been faked by a pair of college kids. It was well, the uh, what was the the mayor, the mayor was and the his, guy we saw him assistant. before in his Exorcist assistant. Three. Yeah. He was like the hospital administrator or something, and the his assistant was the the ambulance driver from, from Halloween, Halloween Two. Two, yeah. And the whole thing is, uh, there's a subplot that was, you know, for reasons that we can you totally say subplot see. that's that very we, generous. Do not yeah. call it a that subplot got in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, where the mayor is afraid he, to leave his office. Well, because he was somehow responsible. <laughs> Can't afford to because they have no other set. <laughs> right? He was responsible for putting Matt Cordell up Away. the river. Yes, yeah. up the river. Yeah, Same I think so. There maybe was okay. So let me try this on for size then, because of this dirty Harry like character who was creating a bad name for the cops, even back in the day. Mm-hmm. Like he's a hero to the department. He's a hero cop, right? Mm-hmm. But to the official dumb. He's like excessive and right. creating a problem it might for be them. A PR nightmare. Mm-hmm. So they set him up, or they charge him, and then they send him to Sing Sing, where he's housed with all of these guys that he put away, mm-hmm. right? Who then cut him up and you know, for better or worse, kill him. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
It's funny how you say for better or worse, kill him. Well, because, Why so, Colin? Well, what's going on there? There's some it's, kind of Frankensteinian <laughs> science that I'm not that entirely sure That is barely sure touched on. Barely that happened. was my... Yeah, it's like, that, I don't fucking know what happened, because that movie gets, never tells you. He gets no. cut up in the, it's a, a shower fight scene. He gets a naked up. shower fight between, like, what, six inmates and him? It was like three. It was like three, yeah. But I'll give, was, I'll, I'm going to give the editor a lot of credit for this scene, because there's no dick in that D- it, yeah. came it, it came close it came very close, close. Like, wow. it came very close right. a couple times off, and even, I mean, yeah. even like it was just barely like top of butt like barely yeah. butt it was yeah. very strategic I agree good editing very not, good. Like yeah. the, not like the fight scene in Eastern Promises with Vigo Mortensen there's there's nothing like that nothing like oh <laughs> nothing yeah. like that yeah. oh yeah that's full on it's like, like a six minute like, fight scene yeah. in a yeah. shot in the bathhouse yeah. or like something. Uh, yeah. Robert Downey Jr. said in uh, Tropic Thunder you never go full dick there it is there it is thank you for using that <laughs> All right, I got a question for you, just to find out if my memory is working right. Right, can I do a Tango and Cash callback? Oh. Was Robert Dazar Zadar. the maniac cop? Zadar, Zadar, the Z comes first. Oh, that's right, it was Zadar. the apostrophe. Yeah, was yeah. he <laughs> in? Uh, he was either in, in, Tango, scene and in Tango and Cash. No, doesn't doesn't like Jack Palance like let these guys you know to beat yeah. up Tango and Cash? Yeah. Isn't it Robert? Zadar? I don't remember Tango and Cash well enough. No, no I don't know the... no, Robert Zadar gets electrocuted in in Tango and Cash. Okay, so wait, that, that's what I'm saying. He's in Tango and Cash. Robert Zadar is in Tango and Cash, but he's only in the prison parts. Yeah. Later on, when we get to Jack Palance, like Robert Zadar isn't. Yeah, part but of there's that. a scene where they're in prison where like there's smoke, and all of a sudden Jack Palance is there, up? and then he brings in I think like oh yeah Big Robert mm-hmm. Zadar. Yeah, okay. okay. So forever to be in prison scenes, yep. Robert Ever. Zadar. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's got like this, yeah. I don't know how you describe this guy. Some kind of uh, chin, a gigantic. It's like a. It's, he has a, a, it's a jaw. He, you know what he it's looks jaw. like. It's a, you know who he jaw. looks like. It's a problem. And it's f- coming full circle. Uh, Nicholas Winding Refn. When you redo your remake, you have to cast Mads Mickelson in that role, right? Like that. That's just, who that guy looks like. On the chin? He, well, but Mads Mickelson <laughs> has that kind prosthetic of prosthetic chin. Like I like this idea that you're going with, <laughs> and we just add chin. To yeah, him. but like Mads Mickelson already has that severe like cheekbone structure yeah. in his face. He like, you know, I he doesn't this. quite have the it, nearly as an extensive of a chin. But right. like that guy reminded me a lot of Mads Mickelson. I was like, oh my god, Nicholas Winding Refn works with him all the time already, so it's probably going to happen. Mm-hmm. I see the connection. Mm-hmm. I say yeah. we put in Mads and we build the chin. Yep. This is yep. my thought. <laughs> we have the, the technology. Like, we gotta have, I, I the, we have If you're no, making the, the chin is cop, key. Yeah. You gotta yeah. have yeah. that Everybody maniac chin. Someone chin. has to have a chin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if Bruce Campbell's not gonna be in it, someone has to have a chin. A yeah. battle of chins. I'm not saying this unless there's a chin in it. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. That's fair. All right, so yeah. this like, guy is cut, stabbed, mutilated. Left for dead. And left for dead. It would seem. So everybody's like, well, it can't be him. Because this becomes, I think, Tom Atkins' working theory. Mm-hmm. That he's not dead. That he's not dead. Right. We can't figure out how or why. And neither can no. we. What do we think of? And they don't bother to explain. Not <laughs> well, particularly. And we don't find, I mean, most of this is, it really feels like it's detective work. Because it feels like we're doing the detective work along with them. Because it takes so long <laughs> to get to the points. Oh, yeah. To figure out what's going on. Because Tom Atkins follows the, uh, uh, the police woman who works in the file room down to the shores and the rotting docks and everything. And she see, he sees her interacting with uh, Matt Cordell, the maniac cop. So she he sees that and figures that out, that, you know, they're connected and that that's where his, you know, Matt Cordell is the one that's doing all this stuff. Well, there's also, I think early in the movie, somebody shoots the maniac cop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Several times, yeah. which doesn't kill him. We're also right. told that, like, his hands are cold as ice, even through his gloves. Yeah. Yes. The, uh, the cop the, the cop that's undercover, the one that is sleeping with Bruce Campbell. Yeah, I forgot right. her name. Mm-hmm. I don't think she has a name. Something. Teresa Mallory. Yep. Yes. Oh, yes. Well Very done. good. She does have <laughs> a name. Yep. Teresa Mallory. And the other officer yep. was Nolan. The blonde, the blonde in the file room is Nolan. Oh, okay. But Teresa Mallory. Yes. It All didn't right. help that Mallory held her badge upside down the one upside time down. she had to fucking show it. Very you true. had one job, Mallory. Yeah, yeah. You held up. How is anyone going to believe you when you're holding yeah. your goddamn badge See, upside I'm a down? Cop. I promise. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, women in the eighties. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just dressed like a prostitute for my job, and here's my upside down badge. Yeah. Oh, well, she was flustered, you know. She yeah, the old cop mm-hmm. chin cop come walking. <laughs> yeah. I see Hands. Yeah. yeah. Is that what this movie should be called instead? Chin, chin cop. cop. Chin cop. I would watch Chin yeah. Cop. Yeah. Chin cop. Yeah. It's yeah. like Wolf Cop, but yep. I might yeah. probably watch Chin Cop more. Yeah. It's like, wow, this seems like they shouldn't have made this movie. I'm watching this. Yeah. Chin Until you cop. get to another Chin Cop. Chin more cop. Chin Cop. 
Double chin cup. Double, double chin, chin cup. Double chin cup. Shut up. Yes. Double chin yeah, cup. Double chin cup. Bravo. That hurt me even to say it. Okay, so. <laughs> I was this close to saying it. Yeah. So I was It would have come out one way or another. Everyone double had to take a drink cup. on that one. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a palate Let's cleanser. get through that one. All right, so I don't know what happened to the guy. There's uh, but, hey, but he gets to like the um the the, the prison doctor. The infirmary, the prison yeah. doctor at this point, who's just like, Oh, I'm going to autopsy him and then he sees something where he ends up checking Matt's pulse. I think he sees like, his hand move, but probably. we don't see that That's actually happen. Like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then he checks his pulse and, and does CPR, his yeah. And yeah. starts doing weird CPR. Oh, you know what it is? I know what it is. His uh, his wounds on his hands aren't clotting. That's what it is, because he's bleeding everywhere. Uh, he's still bleeding. Yeah. It is too much work to that's do on this movie. Yeah, I mean, I agree that yeah, that's that is, what it is. Yeah. Right. They but don't they like, don't say that, but that's what it is. I don't want that much homework watching a movie. You know, I don't want that much homework. No, no. And it becomes some convoluted thing where it's just like, for all intents and purposes, he was dead. There was brain damage. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I'm doing my Cosby at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, Bill, are you here? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. But the, uh, I guess the idea, so he's not, he's not, like, he's not, she, uh, okay. So the, the infirmary doctor says, basically, because this guy's a hero cop, if he goes back into the general population, they are going to kill him this time. And yep. it would be better if we just get him out. So he gives him to the, uh, his Nolan. girlfriend. Yeah, detective, the, the, the policewoman, Nolan. Who takes care of him, and somehow then he is riding, he is like a reanimated cop. Like, there is some kind of supernatural thing maybe happening here, right? That's the problem, is that, like, you cannot have, you cannot bring supernatural elements into a movie that late in the game without setting any rules or boundaries for them. You know, you can't just, it's just like when movies introduce magic in the third act without, like, giving us any sort of reason for it or, like, limitations to it. It just does not work. I buy that he might have been hanging on by a thread and he makes it through. She nurses him back. Sure. But the super strength and right. the super cop the can't cold be shot hands. kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's the, the part. Yeah. yeah. Like, and he exactly. can withstand bullet shot. She yeah. says, I shot, shot him in the head. Twice. Yeah. 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 It's like, you have to, like, make, let's make something clear. Let's either go for the supernatural part or not. Like, yeah. yeah. If you're going to go for it, go for it. Yeah. But they he, don't, they, he, they waffle on it. They don't know what they want to do. Well, and you got to establish it earlier on than that. You know, you can't establish that at the same time you're revealing it, you know? Yeah. yeah. You, know, you gotta, yeah, but, you gotta mean, set us up for that. I suppose, okay, so supernatural stuff aside, I suppose I did appreciate that there wasn't the scene where, like, someone in the, you know, uh, police department or the prison is running some kind of experiment, and yeah. he's like, you yeah. know, it's like, well, we can use this, you know, he's experimental cop, technique, yeah. you know, to, you know. Mm-hmm. We didn't get that scene. I wonder yeah. if they shot it. You know, oh. I wonder if that was there at some point, and it was like I'm the sure effects didn't work out or something. It seems <laughs> like it's a necessity to like f- to bring him from where he is to where he where he was to where he is now. Like it feels like there should be something. Mm-hmm. I find it hard to believe got. that they didn't shoot that, but they shot the extra mayor scenes. <laughs> right, <Yeah. laughs> I seriously do not believe they actually <laughs> shot was, those mayor that was scenes. For obviously, comedic effect. They were <laughs> <Yeah>. wonderful. <laughs> How dare you put them down? <laughs> I was going to say, I bet those college kids that shot the mayor scene shot that scene. Yeah. (laughs) Could be. Yeah. So this movie also contained. Yeah. Yeah. It contained a a narrative surprise, I guess, uh, for me upon the first time I watched it and possibly for you tonight. So we're going to enter into spoiler territory here. If you haven't seen Maniac Cop, just jump ahead like, you know, two minutes or so. If you're not going to watch it, just listen. Yeah. But um, so Tom Atkins. Goes to investigate uh, the the uh, the girlfriend, the the police officer that Nolan, was helping yes. Nolan. Yes, and the maniac cop shows up, and they get into a battle to the death. And old Tom Atkins goes flying out the god dang window, like yeah. with qu- a quarter of the movie still left to go. Yeah, shocking. Dead. You were not shocked, man. No, I was more. I was out of it at that point. I was like. I'm over this already, so sure, why not? You know, he gets slammed into uh, <laughs> filing cabinets like 50 times. Yeah, yeah. but so then he gets thrown on top of a uh, was it a checkered cab? It was like it was a, a cop cab. car. Yeah. yeah, out the window. Mm-hmm. Okay, to me that was shocking because I was like, you know, a movie starring Tom Atkins. Yeah, he's gonna. It's him and Bruce Campbell team up to take down the maniac cop. But instead, Tom Atkins is out the door, and the movie yeah. becomes primarily about Bruce Campbell. From Unfortunately. That point. During my reading, 
I accidentally read that that happened. Uh, but no. in, in the reading, I was shocked. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what, he dies? Yeah. So I was shocked. I got the shock. Yeah, yeah. Just not in the viewing. It is surprising for an 80s movie. Yeah. I will, I will yeah. say that. That's well, so very unusual. Tom Atkins is our money. Yeah. yeah. We're just going to throw him out a window. But yeah. once they introduced the supernatural stuff, I was like, oh, this movie is going to do things I don't want it to do. Like, that was when I was like, oh, it's taking turns that are unnecessary. So I was not that surprised once... That was introduced. You would have so. been more interested in it if it would have just stuck with the, or either it well, has to explain the supernatural or leave the supernatural. Yeah, just have a thread we can follow. Just give us yeah, 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 just have us a, a, have a through bonded. line. Yeah, you yeah, know, stick stick to your guns. Yeah. Make a choice. Mm-hmm. Just go for it. Mm-hmm. Stick to your maniac cop guns. <laughs> <laughs> well, was it uh, so? There is like a uh, the big set piece of the movie, I believe, happens around this point where there's a St. Patrick's Day parade. The as far as the cops are concerned, wait, when do they catch Bruce Campbell? That was before the. Uh, it's, well, well, they he, they catch him and then doesn't he break out? And yeah. Then, after they, the parade, they catch him again. They take him into custody uh, when they tell him that his wife is yeah. dead. And they're like, oh, you're a number one suspect. And then yeah. he escapes. Yeah. Because and he's hiding out during the parade, them. remember? Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. I guess that's the, I'm trying to get to like the, the plot idea here that the cops are having the St. Patrick's Day parade because as far as they're concerned, they have caught the maniac cop. The populace can rest easy. We're cops right. again. You know, law and order is restored. Yeah. Bad guys in jail. Big banner. We're cops again. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, press conference. Except, yeah. of course, the maniac cop goes into the police station and yeah. kills just about everyone. Just because about it's mostly everyone. vacant. You know, there's only, it's a skeleton crew there because everyone else is, because they say, they talk about how like beefed up security is for the St. Patrick's mm-hmm. Day Parade. Very you know, true. there's plain so clothes officers and everyone. And the one know. officer that looks the like creep? Stephen Avery. Yeah. 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 That officer. Sean pointed yeah. out. Sean pointed out he looked like Stephen Avery and that's all I could see. His speech was kind of similar. It really yeah. was. Yeah. His speech was like, similar. An early yeah. role. And he's like, yeah. everyone else is gone. I'm stuck here with you. Like, mm-hmm. there's nobody there. Like, there's like five the people there. I'm talking ourselves. about Shaft is in the building. Oh, shit. Richard Roundtree's in this movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As the uh, a commissioner. Good, a lot of good he does. But he yeah. doesn't do a whole lot of, like, angry shouting. No. He's no, not expected to, uh, yeah. I think that's like his lot in life now. He was in Brick playing basically the same part. Oh, he was. He was in yeah. Seven he was playing in basically, seven, the, same basically yep. the same part. Yeah. He was in Brick. Oh, yeah, you want a police yeah, captain? Brick. Richard yeah. Roundtree. Oh, God, Richard Roundtree. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, so with everybody dead, the suspicion again falls on uh, uh, Bruce Campbell. I like the way that the cops... I like the way. I don't know. It was interesting. <laughs> the way that the cops like uh, accuse Bruce Campbell's girlfriend... Officer Mallory mm-hmm. of being in cahoots with him again right. with no evidence. No it's just evidence. like this sure fits that you're the you know you two are okay. fucking so you have to right. be doing everything together. It's also yeah. <laughs> but it works based on what like because uh, Tom Atkins left a uh, McCray left a voice message for the commissioner about what was going on. There's a cop who's doing it and there's a female accomplice uh, accomplice yeah. helping him out. And I'm just like, well, I'm circumstantial, but it fits. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> It's very true. It's very true. It does, but it's like, man, they're booking people, or arresting people <laughs> yeah. on like flimsy, they're, flimsy. Yeah. They're yeah. desperate to close this case. Yeah. They're desperate yeah. to just get it. Done. PR nightmare, Colin. That's right. Close yeah. the case. I guess. Be done. <laughs> Jesus. Fuck it. If we don't get the right person, we got a. We person. got a person. Done. Yeah. Which, if you're if you're someone like Sean and I, where you read read and listen to a lot of true crime, that's your yeah. worst fear is that yeah. you know. Yeah. Oh my God, they just want a person. They don't want yeah. the person. Yeah. yeah. My biggest fear is just, I'm going to be wrong a place, wrong time. Around. Yep. Exactly. Same here. And not the person. Yep. It's like I know in my never head do that anything I am alone, dude. You got to have no. alibis for everything. Yep. I just stay home. Yeah. Well, well no, my wife got, gets murdered. I'm fine. Yeah. You got Siri here, or whatever, and she'll know where you're at all yeah. the time. And you're the tracking yep. me. Yeah. Yep. It's like I was here. Mm-hmm. That's why I believe in Facebook check-in, like check into what you're there doing you on go. Facebook, because that's a solid alibi. Like, hey, I was here at this time, man. I was here. You can't say I did shit. And I, that's actually gotten people out of stuff before, actually. People have, that's what I'm saying. have had there witness. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm checking in everywhere. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so, Hold on. Let me check in yeah. at Colin's basement. Check into Colin's house. <laughs> did you guys? If somebody gets murdered here, though. Oh, oh shut up. <laughs> We're all fucked, even anyway, Igor. Igor included. Go yeah. Which one of you did it? <laughs> oh, it's going to be a murder mystery. Oh, kind of freak show. Yeah. Yeah. Cue the lightning and the thunders yeah. and right now. Yeah. Lights so, go out. I can do. Well, all right. So about Maniac Cop. There is right. a moment where we get to our big action set piece. A our chase only sequence. Only action set piece? Well, they get scale by having the uh, the parade. 
Which I think sure. they just which is one of the only right, which was one of the like, only things actually shot in New York, yeah. and you can yeah. tell. Like, really? Holy shit! Yeah. Three days in oh New York. yeah, yeah. They got three days in New York to shoot. Yeah, and everything else was. And that three days was shoot. just that parade. I'm pretty sure right. that's it. With like Sam the Ray. different like early like the early scenes of the people walking down the street. Those were the streets of L. A. Yeah, hands well, down. I've but you never could see seen the, the twin towers in the background in the in the wide aerial shots, not in the no, close up street level at the beginning when you know nothing about. Late 80s special effects? Yeah. Yeah, you can't do that. You can composite that shit in there. Yeah, not, yeah. Not in uh, those... those- those, uh, tilt up. I've, I believe I've that never seen a street in New York no, with are New York. one person I believe on those it. Are New York stuff, right? Yeah. But yeah. Well, especially because also. Oh, well, okay. We'll have to check. Um, the streets in New York are never that empty. You never see one person walking down you know a street what? in New I York disagree. ever. I've been wandering around New York at three o'clock in the morning before. Mm. I believe that. that I guess empty. it depends on where you are in New York. It depends but, where you are. There are but, plenty of places in New yeah. York that are completely empty. It's but there was we're going to have to find an answer. I've been just going off of the Bill Lustig thing. Like that's a he's a New York guy. Like, I believe, all of his movies were like they literally do not stories. did not have the permits to film that much in New York. Were, they, they literally got, they got, got three, three days, days and that was three days it in New York to do. Yeah, but that's all who they knows got. What yeah, is I, wow. I imagine more of the like. Stuff where you don't see the New York City line is more yeah the interiors shot basically interiors be, and whatnot. Yeah. I think a lot of the like stuff with like when she got like mugged in the beginning. I don't think that 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 looked like a set. That didn't look like New I York. would go opposite and say it's New York. Really? <laughs> because yeah. no one's ever going to tell us the difference. I'm just going to say something. All right, so no one's going to correct us. But man, those those glory <laughs> shots of Fifth Avenue for that parade though, they were all about that. They were yeah, they were just, just like, like get is, the most out of this right, right now. Yeah, yeah. Like, because that's your big everything. moment. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. this is this makes us a big picture. Right. This because <laughs> this is production value. We are in New York during yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. It works. Well, there's a car chase. There is the big chase. action set piece yes. where I th- actually it's not a chase, is it? It's like a it's race. A not, a chase. Eh. We're trying to get to the dock. It feels pretty weak. Coming up Cobra. I, that's another. what I was gonna say. Yeah. Following Cobra, that co- was not it, a chase. It seems pretty weak coming <laughs> off Cobra. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe Bill Lustig is not the greatest action director. Although I will no. say that if it's supposed to be in the streets of New York, that was probably an accurate chase because yeah. you can't go very fast. Exactly. <laughs> there's people yeah, and cars true. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. But they end up chasing the maniac cop, Bruce Campbell, and like everybody base ends up at the dock. Dock 14. Yeah. Why this is significant, it's because that's where the Officer Nelson brought Nolan. Uh, Nolan. Yeah. Brought Cordell's body after, and it has been the home I base. Guess. They're just yes, hiding out because no one goes yeah. there, I guess. Right. Because they're, well, the docks are like, they're disintegrating. They're, they're yeah. Be all demolished within a couple weeks. Exactly. But they're all falling apart and everything. So, well, I'm unsure why, like, you know, uh, um, because Officer Mallory says, like, I know where they're going. And it's like, okay, what, what logic are you using to do this? Yes, he has been there before. At this point in the, in the story, Bruce Campbell has been abducted by the maniac cop for reasons right. unknown because, you know. Well, the police just, find him again and throw him the back of a yeah, paddy and then wagon as they. The know. maniac cop takes the paddy wagon. Yeah. It's like, okay, I get that. Maniac cop's like mm-hmm. just trying to get out of there, I suppose, right? Right. I guess. Well, and so kn- he's got Bruce Campbell as like a bonus. She knows sure. where he's going because Atkins told her that that's where he followed him. And I suppose yeah. at that point he wants to kill Bruce Campbell just because he wants to kill somebody. I don't know. I guess that's yeah. what I'm saying. The logic here, she the did, motivation yeah. is his, kind of. She did say the the chick it. with the bum leg. What was her name? Nolan. She did say at one point talking to him that she's like, I didn't realize you were just so angry killing innocent people. Like, there's no logic to what he's doing at this point. Yeah, she thought he was he has a vendetta, like but he also just wants to hurt people. Right. Yeah. She thought he'd be either a Charlie Bronson going around killing the bad people in New yeah. York mm-hmm. or going after the people responsible for his incarceration and murder. Right. Yes. Hence the police chief, murder, the mayor, police. and uh, the commissioner, right? Mm-hmm. The I mayor. think that was the idea. It's like eventually he's going to work his way to all of them, but mm-hmm. he starts off just killing random people in the street. Would it have been better if he was actually like uh, murdering, you know, like at the beginning, say, the, there's a scene where these two guys uh, mug this woman. The and woman he kills the muggers? If he kills them instead of her, right. yeah, it depends on who they. It, I don't. Know, I don't know who the filmmakers want you to root for because yeah, I mean, for real. there is no clear like hero and villain in this movie. Yeah, because yeah. everyone's of like morally kind of you know. Yeah, Bruce Campbell becomes like iffy. the the uh, hero by default just because he's the man wrongfully accused. Right. Yeah. 
not necessarily heroic figure. No, we're not really rooting for him, but we're also not really rooting for Maniac. Cop. We're not really rooting for anybody. Mm-mm. No, Tom so, Atkins. Tom, yeah, Tom Atkins. Yeah, Tom Atkins. Yeah. He's just doing <laughs> solid <laughs> fucking <window>. police work, <laughs> right. and yeah. then he gets He's chucked trying. out the window. Yeah, yeah. out the window. Mm-hmm. So then we're left with nobody. We're just like, all right, they're chasing each other. Things yeah. are going on. We finally mm-hmm. get a face reveal of the maniac cop Which, way late in the movie. Uh, late. Too late. Way too late. Too late in the movie. Yeah. And what'd you think of that? When you finally see what he looks like. Eh. Well, how's he look? Like, Scarred up. His, Disfigured. Like his, he got cut in the face a lot. Like his head yeah. is a perfect square. He looked like a blockhead from Gumby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that's the actor. I've always, you know, yeah. he's got like all of his I can't, facial like, it's features just, are like very crammed into the very center of his face. I know. Uh, yeah. Very severe. Yeah. 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 I know, but I just like, I, it's so distracting. I didn't even really notice the cuts. I was just like, wow. Well, he's got like, uh, black uh, this, from these gigantic makeup appliances on his cheek, but mm-hmm. otherwise there's really nothing. I thought it was like a pretty piss poor, like design for a yeah. creature. It was nothing special. It wasn't anything. They get to, uh, not worth a big reveal. In the sequels. That's what I was just going to yeah, say. Yeah, I've seen actually like, like a, little, a, dried, a little more dried out. You know, rotting. he looks like, he looks like uh, Jason from yes! part eight. I was just going to say that. Without yes. the mask. He does. Part yeah. eight. He very oh, much does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right at the end when he yeah. whips the mask off, he's like. Rah! It was definitely not yes. worth a long reveal. No. No. Not worth it at all. No payoff. If there's one, if there, if there's one negative, if there's one of my negatives, <laughs> of this movie is that they should have they should have moved that up a long way. It's like yeah. this should have been a it's a maniac cop, but it's not a maniac cop movie. Right. Like it's no. it is a is a, it's an investigation movie. It's a Tom Atkins movie. It's a Tom Atkins procedural. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it a maniac is. cop movie for a long time. And even when we get to the maniac cop, it's just like mm, all right. So you're saying you're not you didn't get the movie that you were sold. I don't think so. Well so what is it about then? What is the is the movie making a comment on you know I mean like because it is you know, is it making a comment making on a comment. the? Well, I think it has to be making a, you know some kind of statement police, about yeah. yeah. But it's also talking about like the dirty hairy character yeah. type, which you know I think you mm-hmm. know you lived through. I mean, right up until Cobra, obviously it was eighty six. So it was only a couple of years before this. The cop who's awesome at taking the law into his own hands and how is that dangerous, mm-hmm. right? And this is like. Okay, so they catch that guy, you know, and they put him away. Like in this mm-hmm. movie universe, Marion Cobretti goes to jail. Right, right. Past all the good stuff that Marion <laughs> yeah. Cobretti has right. done, yep. and he's just in jail. Yep. Yeah, he's not eating pizza with scissors anymore. No, no, right. no. He's past that. But then he comes back. Only he comes back as. I suppose then he becomes a villainous character, like mm-hmm. the heroic yeah, Cobra comes people, back yeah. as a, a villainous character because his mind is gone and he just does what he's good at, which is killing. Only in this case, indiscriminately. Yeah. <clears throat> which is to say mm-hmm. that, I don't know. It's confusing. Well, I mean, what the comment then is that that, that, that type of character has always been like a murderous, you know, right. um, once you take away, I don't know, like you know, know. the now, upper brain. That, now fo- that he's quote unquote dead, yeah, that his base level of where he was at is just a kill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. Not okay, the strongest gonna, argument, right. but okay. We're going to yeah. abandon that, I guess. Yeah. I mean, but, uh, so I mean, yeah. until so light, uh, inspiration hits, but uh, I guess so. This movie. So at the end of it, then, yeah. How do we get rid of the maniac cop? Uh, rather quickly, as it were. <laughs> But he, I mean, yeah. he kind of gets rid of himself. He's yeah, yeah. He he impales himself. Well, this and then was, his truck drives into a lake. This was the part of my question. I think oh, it's the Hudson. Hudson. Yeah, yeah, I think it's yeah. the Hudson. Oh, that's right. This is supposed to be. In yeah, yeah. Right, never mind. <laughs> this, I don't understand what he was doing there. Yeah, like, what the, what was his game plan? Right. You know? Don't know. Let's drive Pelmel toward the water. Yeah. Uh, uh, not swerving out of the way of you know the giant uh, whatever the hell it was pendulum the, that was set up for him to run into. I don't know what yeah, the hell. Yeah. That was. I think it was a mast, maybe. That yeah, was but what lowered. for? Uh, it was just boat stock there, but it was just hanging there by like a crane. Yeah, like it yeah. was like no, it was hanging there by two ladders that were set up with a thing over it. And <laughs> hanging down from it. That's yeah. all that was. The yeah, murder yeah, pendulum. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, so he quote unquote gets impaled on that. Yeah. 
as the whole paddy wagon goes in. Pretty decent stunt. Yeah, it's a good stunt because there's Campbell's a dude on it. Yeah. Stunt yeah. guy has yeah. to go flying off. Oh, off. I felt, did you guys like worry a little bit about Bruce yeah. Campbell's stunt guy? A little bit. Guy? Yeah. Were you, a little like, bit. My heart She's skipped a little bit. I was like, oh no. And that thing's coming down right yeah, no. in the water. This is like yeah. two uh, shows in a row where oh like stuntmen are going to die. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it anymore, guys. I cannot watch. I can't watch like, stuntmen yeah, about to watch, die anymore. I can't watch when stuntmen die again. Yeah. It's not two weeks in a row that I just, I don't, I can't do it anymore. That's what makes it exciting. <laughs> it is because there's real people. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't have that shit anymore. No, it's, it's like, like, uh, it's like yes watching you, like yes you do. Road Warrior. And that well, that mean, guy it, just died from The Walking Dead. Like, yeah, just okay. died. He just died. like no, but I mean, you know what I'm saying. In in films, I guess like I, I, I end up watching. Yeah, like, but these, the, the, the stunt guy died know, for The no, Walking no, Dead. I get it. Yeah. So the, I mean, there well, are I mean, still you, people. You know. Yeah, you've got like. um uh, Fury Road. Yeah, that was yeah. Some, those were some impressive know. stunts. Yeah. You know, like Drive like, and you yeah. know, John Wick and mm-hmm. Atomic Blonde and those type yeah. of films. But like the bigger ones, I'm just you know I would prefer to see stuntmen actually doing. You oh, know, Fast and the Furious is all stuntmen. That's all those movies are. They said Vin well, Diesel. Sure no stuntman drove from one skyscraper into the other. Uh, they said they said Vin Diesel. You don't know does that. Thirteen. <laughs> I know they that. said Vin Diesel. Tom Cruise was not yeah. in that movie, so I know. <laughs> that's legit. Uh, oh. Vin Diesel only does between seven and thirteen percent of his own stunts. So I, mean, I believe that Vin Diesel does a lot of uh, drinking Corona and because talking he's about walking family. Around going, I'm Vin and that's Diesel, it. And that's this. it. Yeah, exactly. Vin Diesel so. doesn't do his own yeah. stunts. Okay. No. No. Well, yeah. who would ensure that? You got to keep him yeah. alive. Yeah, that's disappointing. So yeah, the maniac cop goes into the water, and then a hand comes up out of the. It's not a very cinematic shot no, of the. No. So we know he's alive. And so then, how do you kill him? That's a good question. I can don't you? think do you? you can. I don't. There know. are two sequels in which we have to find this out. Uh, I. I you don't can do that homework, do. Sean. You can do that homework for us. I might do us. the second one. <laughs> Just because it's on YouTube, and I kind of want to see where they go from here. Oh, don't Christ. you dare bring it to the freak show. I <laughs> what don't even. Next week. No. <laughs> Uh, but I, you know, so I'm, I, I will, I'll probably watch part three I hear is, uh, not good at all. As mm. far as, you know, if you get into part three of Maniac Cop, the right. edge yeah. of yeah. silence. Well, I'm surprised that there were more than there one were, Maniac yeah. Cop, yeah. Yeah, which yeah, means that too. this movie was like a financial success on video or been, something. Yes. Because I mean, yeah. the second two went direct to video or theatrical releases. So, I mean, yeah. I guess it's easier to release those, but yeah, there was some success with it. So it got sequels. Well, that's uh, okay. So I tell you what we're going to do here. We're going to go around and we're going to review Maniac Cop. Each one of us give you our thoughts. So I don't know who's going to like it, who isn't. I have an idea how this is going to break down. I think so, too. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to find out on the other side of our mailbag. First of all, we're going to answer some of your mail. So we're going to summon our mailman to bring it to us. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. He looks good in his little prosthetic chin and cop outfit with his white gloves. I've never noticed, but he just he dresses up for every movie. He I didn't really rock the, no, no, like 250 yeah. episodes in, but I've never noticed his You <laughs> just chastised him over the postman outfit, did, you know? He did, but he did that a week late. Yeah, but he's got the prosthetic chin and everything, nice. you know? It looks good. Oh, it's good look. It fell off. Uh-huh. Igor, get that. All right, oh. so you can write into us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Shining Freak Show. By email. Sad Freak Show at Yahoo.com. On Twitter. <laughs> at Sad Freak Show. If you go out of order, it screws <laughs> You screw me. I'm always third. <laughs> I'm just going around the table. Yeah. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, tonight about Maniac Cop. Well, oh, you shit. want to start with our Maniac Cop or Cobra write ins? Uh, Let's start with Maniac Cop. Yeah, I'll start with me. Okay. Chris Huddleston writes in and says, Judds. He says, I just watched this for. <laughs> and he says, I just watched this for the first time a couple months ago and enjoyed it. He hasn't seen the sequels. B Movie Poster Vault writes in and says, You should expect Maniac Cop to be awesome, then a very good part two, then a disjointed mess with part three. Hmm. William Lustig got pissed off at the producers, handed in half a film, and then walked. Co producer Joel Soison had to take over to finish it. Thank you for that synopsis. Yeah, I appreciate that. Interesting. Wait, with the wait with with, with this one or with, with the, the third, third, third one? one. The third the badge one. of silence. Is Joel Soison the screenplay writer for Trick or yes. Treat? Yes, Joel yes. Yes. He right. is. One of my favorite films. Go wow. back. Trick or Treat, 1986. We Not Trick or Treat. Now Colin's going to bring you, you know to the freak show. Like 
Direct facts. If Colin can just be like, I know that name, and point to a poster. He's <laughs> yeah, like, we all. That person did this. We all just check the poster. Yep. Just so you guys know. Yeah, right. Uh, You're getting legitimate information yeah, yeah, yeah. from this podcast. <laughs> the old gray matter hasn't gone exactly. black yet. Uh, ruin your day. Writes in wow. and says don't ruin our day. that it's rad that we're watching Maniac Cop. Oh, it is other rad. people are behind Thank you. It. Thank you for listening. It's rad yes. that you're listening. Uh, Joey Adams writes in and says the first two movies are great. The third is okay. But he says, let's talk about Larry Cohen, the writer of the movie, Indeed. has directed some of very cool movies himself. It's Alive, The Stuff, and Q, The Winged Serpent. And yeah. uh, Joey also pointed out that um, uh, Larry Cohen directed uh my favorite episode of uh, masters of horror it was called uh pick me up it was cool because it was like it was about this uh these two psychos and they were fighting over a fruz of bulk as they're like, i've seen that yeah oh my god walker yeah and I've wheeler seen that. right yep. well, walker is mm-hmm. the hitchhiker and yep. wheeler is the truck driver and they're yep. both you know that serial wow. killer walker and wow. yeah walker and i got wheeler. it walker yeah. and wheeler. got it yep gotcha you gotta yep. make those quick connections when you're making these. Yep. Uh, That's right. And Feruza Balk. I mean, and Feruza Balk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Who else would it be? And that was there Michael Moriarty, Larry mm. Cohen's muse as the as oh, a Wheeler, go. I believe. Okay. Uh, Dom Cree. Dom. Who? Uh, Dom, promised. are you here to insult me? Is this <laughs> going on? He promised he was going to bring back the Creo meter for this. Oh, oh. oh. So he says, uh, for all its faults, it's a still a f- fun movie to watch. So it's four. Out of five wow. Zadars. Four? Four, Four five Zadars. Wow. wow. Four chins. He's got a question, though, for us. Given that there's a remake on the horizon, what would the Saturday Night Freak Show crew do to Maniac Cop to bring it into this millennium, yet still maintain the same spirit of the original? Yeah, I, I think that I think you got it. Whatever location you choose, you got to shoot in that location. That's first and foremost. You mm-hmm. can't can't stage it. You can't. Which I honestly, knowing Nicholas Wenning Ruffin is behind it, I have a lot more faith in it than I would knowing any other directors behind it. I, I think it's going to. Well, he's it, not the direct, he, he isn't directing. But he's a producer. It, he's okay. just producing. Like, yeah. I think that you know it's still going to have a distinct visual style if he's involved in any way. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, that's um, true. But like content wise, and if we look at the like the world we live in now, yeah, like, trim right. out the supernatural Mani- element. Well, a movie called Maniac Cop. Mm-hmm. Like, how does that exist in the world we live in today? It'll be the flip side of the Death Wish. Uh, yeah, exactly. Trailer, right, because mm-hmm. it's going to be like, like cops, bad guys. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. okay. Or you know, it's going to be. Well, I mean, I assume you're going to keep some of the same beats. It's going to sure. be there's this rogue cop on the force. It, the rest yeah. of us are you know decent. But there's this guy who's giving the rest of us a bad name. We got. I mean, I imagine you'd follow some of the same beats, but I think like it's got to come out saying, the supernatural. You it have to. to. Yeah, yeah, it has to. It won't work. It's it I will not. Work. It's to, too. They, it's well, too much of a hot. Right. It's too much of a hot button topic right now in this political climate to, for it to that, not. Yeah, right. to not the be super, supernatural. Well, the supernatural definitely helps in that regard. Yeah, but they yeah. also like if getting moves it from reality a little right. bit. Right, exactly. They have to, but I I like the idea, like you said, of like it's like a rogue cop, but then like all the good cops have to come and mm. figure that out. That it helps ha- it. Supernatural helps it. Um, yeah. It has yeah, to have it's, a... It has to decide what it's going to be. Exactly. Unlike what this movie yeah. is. It has to decide before production starts. Yes. Yeah. 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 Decide it, yeah. what it's going to do. Yeah. Well, all right. So then we've got some people writing in about, and we thank you for this again, for Cobra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for Cobra. Right. So B-Movie Poster Vault, right? Or he Actually, he retweeted... Uh, our Cobra tweet and says that us going all in on the movie because we all recommended it may actually encourage him to get around to watch it. Do it. It's watch worth it. it. It's yeah. so Did much you? fun. Did you watch yeah. it? Yeah. What'd you think? Let mm-hmm. us know. Yeah. Please Let do. us know what you thought. I loved it. Yeah. That's a round table <laughs> recommendation. That almost Love never it. happens. It's a great movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stella Anderson says it's awesome. Stella! That we, that Stella! See, there we go. <laughs> uh, she says it's awesome that we pointed out that Drive borrowed Cobra's matchstick habit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rushmore 309 says, uh, been awesome. binging your podcast lately. Was super hyped to see the review of Cobra pop up. Yeah. Uh, grew up on it. Would love to hear you guys review Rad. I love that growing Ooh, up. Ooh, Rad. Uh, and watched that with some friends not too long ago. It was the hardest I've laughed in forever. <laughs> that might be a good I, one. I mean, that's the not, BMX I'm, movie. Is that the one? It's it, it? The title alone, I'm sold. You know, yeah. it's Brad, gotta be. Is this one I showed the clip of where they do the I next Oh my so. god, it might yes, be. It yeah, was. So, yeah, yeah. We've, yeah. We've talked about Rad and we've looked at clips from it, so eh, you never know. It yeah. may make its way. It may make its way. 
It's on our radar. We like 80s cheese, you know, so. And that is 80s cheese. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a double cheese. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, William Douglas writes in and says, I just noticed that the photographer from Cobra starred in the 1986 series Sledgehammer, also one of those robots in the uh, photography set, <laughs> oh, has wow. a dong-like nose. <laughs> Oh, well, now I need to go rewatch that Thank scene because I need to notice that. Like, no, Thank I you for that observation. <laughs> for whatever yeah. reason. I'm very curious about what the robot budget was for that movie. Robot budget. I hope yeah. it's broken down. <laughs> yeah. if, if anyone we've ever... Got robot budget, we've yeah. got Stallone sweat budget. No, if anyone got... ever like has the opportunity to talk to Stallone, please ask him about the fucking robots. <laughs> yeah. I need to know. Yeah. Yeah. What is with the robots? Like yeah. robots? And are they in storage right now? Do you yeah, have them, are Sly? Are, are they, they yeah. in your house? Auction? The robot from Rocky IV. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I want to know. I need, I need I more answers. I bet you you can probably find out about that one. Uh, probably. Uh, I hope Chris, somebody owns it somewhere. Chris Huddleston also writes in and says, despite the current violent crime rate being as low as it's been in my lifetime, politicians would like us to believe that large swaths of the country are like something out of a Mad Max flick. You got to come live where we live, Chris. Yeah, Yeah. it is. It is is bad where we are. So Uh, he says with our current political climate, do you think we could see a return of movies like Cobra, especially when it comes to the cop who has to break all the rules because the system won't let him do what needs to be done? This is kind of an interesting counterpoint and something we're talking about with Maniac right. Cop. It depends I, I on who he's. Yeah. It depends on who he's saving. Like what's what 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 he's out. What what his what he's out for. What he's trying. Yeah. To yeah to I th- I think day. a rogue cop going against politicians would do well right now. Mm-hmm. Very well, much so. This is where we'll see. Yeah. With, but I think like you're Death Wish mm-hmm. because yeah. Yeah. without the cop aspect of it, somebody's in the trailer. He's like, but you're not a cop. It's because he's doing the things that the cops can't do. That's right. what it's going to be. It's going to yeah. be more of more vigilante than it is going to be right. Cop stuff. Like, it's not going to be establishment stuff. Stuff. Right. It, it, if it is, like, I think End of Watch. You remember that movie, End of Watch? Yeah. Jake, yeah. The, and Jake Gyllenhaal, Michael Pena. That came Michael out. Pena, yeah. 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 That's, that's not going to happen. We're not going to get more movies like that. Like, that's. That movie was a fluke in its time, and I don't think it we're going to see more on like who that. Vigilante tools. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. I have doubts about the Death Wish remake. Yeah, yeah. as far as that goes, that well, that, Eli I mean, Roth is directing, based, so right, just based you on know, that trailer it seemed a little. Uh, it's it's very specific on what you can you can do and get away with, and it's narrow. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's very it's narrow, narrow yeah. area on where you can make these movies mm-hmm. I think, right now. MFL. This is the last one. Oh. You know, he uh, took a picture of Steven Seagal's hand and footprints. Uh, I assume that's outside of Man's the, Chinese Theater. Right. I assume so. Unless he's just Wait, like, Se- I captured Steven Seagal. <laughs> and here's a picture of his hands and footprints. Seagal made, it, Seagal made it outside the Chinese Theater? No, I don't believe that. Did he? It's some... That is... All right, MFL, you have to tell us yeah, where this is. No yeah. Are you it's telling it's me that footprints. Like, are you telling me Seagal is down the is down the sidewalk from Marilyn Monroe? Like that just doesn't add up. To I me. want pictures yeah. if you <laughs> well, watch. Well, just like Seagal's hometown. You just need or to something. know where it is. Yeah, yeah. I want. I want to know yeah. more about yeah. this. Yeah. So is that a this, plea for us to do more Seagal movies? Is I think that, that was I an can answer bring hard to, to, kill. to <laughs> us talking about Seagal so much on the Cobra episode. Gotcha. All right, so we're going to go around the room. We're going to find out what Sean thinks of uh, his movie choice here, Maniac Cop. But, but not first, yet. we'll find out what everybody else thinks about it. All right. Colin! <laughs> yes, Sean? What do you think about Maniac Cop? Um, you know, I actually kind of dug it. I did like Maniac. I mean, it's one of those movies that, you know, I mean, now that we're talking about they're gonna that there's going to be a remake. I'm like, this is one of those movies that feels to me like it deserves a remake. Deserves. Okay. That might be stretching it too far. A movie that like I would not be we're okay with. It. Yeah, I'm okay if they remake this movie because it's uh, imperfect. It would probably be better. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I think you could improve. I think, but I think there's, I think that there is, uh, there's something here. You know, the that bones it's are working there. towards. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's some yeah. substance here that's interesting. You know, to deal with and to explore. That's so why I think a remake might actually be able to, uh, you know, open it up a little bit or delve deeper. Or, you know, and be more cinematic. I think also you're saying visually. I think yeah, it. You know, we could improve upon Maniac Cop, but I mean, I really enjoyed. The pairing of, uh, you know, uh, Tom Atkins and uh, Bruce Campbell, they have at least two scenes together. They're not, you know, these like, you know, it's not De Niro and Pacino, you know. Yes, it is. What are you talking about? It didn't, <laughs> totally have, it didn't have that intensity. You know, it's like you're aware that, yeah, these two guys are sitting across the table from you, but the gamesmanship wasn't there. No, you know? yeah, there's gamesmanship. That's what I'm saying. Like that, those other yeah. scenes, like, you know, 
I was just uh, listening to a podcast that were talking about uh, Raw Meat, a.k.a. Deathline. They got Donald Pleasance and Christopher Lee in a room together where Whoa. they kind of have oh that, you know, sparring, <laughs> verbal sparring titans, match. Yeah. yeah. This isn't that. It's just like that. you're just, you know, you enjoy Which is seeing weird, them on paper together. It should be. On paper, it should be that, you right. know, but yeah. it doesn't but work out But that they're way. not adversarial. No. I guess that's the... That's what's going on there. No. So you're not and seeing these guys like, act against each other, you know? Right. And there's also like, you know, Tom Atkins is up here. And at this point, Bruce Campbell's down here. Mm-hmm. Like maybe give it a, give it some more years, like where Bruce Campbell is at. Oh, he's definitely a better Tom actor Atkins. now. Yeah. Than he was then. There's a time where they could be put together. This is not it. Mm-hmm. But I still, like I said, I enjoy seeing them on the screen together, but it's only because I've spent so much time watching their films. And seeing this so late was kind of like a cool thing because it's like, oh, look at it. It's like young Bruce Campbell and young, you know, Tom. Well, you know. <laughs> young Tom Atkins. <laughs> Actually, oh, that yeah, young Tom that's Atkins. the thing. It's like Tom Atkins looks the way that, like, to me, he has always Tom looked. Tom Atkins looked the way Tom he Atkins He doesn't looks. age. He's like, always yeah. been that age. Like, yeah. Oh, it's Tom Atkins because he looks that way. Yeah. But Bruce Campbell, it seems like I'm more familiar with, you know, I'm still yeah. watching. What did Tom Atkins look like when he was young? Uh, I don't think guy, he, was he, he ever young. He shaved his mustache and he was in the fog. <laughs> yeah, but like, but he still looks old now. <laughs> Younger. Like, I don't know what like 20, 20 year old, six yeah. year old Tom Atkins yeah. looked like. This is where we find out he was 26 when the fog was made. <laughs> uh, I don't know. He had to be in his 30s. Oh, okay, that'd be okay. great. Yeah. 30s? You're, no. No. You think he was in 40s in the I fog? No. I don't know his, his timeline. I'm Maybe. curious. Well, he's white haired by this and I think the he was 80s. born white haired at this point. Maybe. Okay, you might be right. He might he was be born in the 40s in the fog. Uh, everybody's Googling this. Yeah, so we're Captain all Google will have this answer. This is something we'll need to know. Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, I mean, I agree with uh, Michaela's assessment that the supernatural, I think it does actually need to be explained to have a better movie. You know, it's like either you have it or you don't. And to have it um, suggested, but without any kind of, you know, it's like there's... I don't know. There's some films I've watched where, you know, I prefer that they explain less Mm. this one. I need more, but maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's what makes me like the movie is that, you know, I can't answer everything, but it feels like a lack of planning or a lack of, uh, you know, like the director just didn't want to deal with it or the writer didn't want to deal with it, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I don't know, but overall, I think, you know, you can have a good time with maniac cop. I haven't seen the other two. And to be honest with you, I don't really feel like I need to, I think I had my maniac cop experience. So it's a kind of a, you know, the thumb is up, you know, and, the, you know, you should check it out. But it's not like you got to rush right out and, but and not see But not in the direction it. of maniac cop, too. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah. It's like, yeah, it was entertaining. So I'll say, uh, you know, you can check it out. That's uh, that's maniac cop. Michaela, what'd you think? Sean, I will say for your knowledge, uh, Tom Atkins is currently 81 years old, okay. um, which I met him a couple years ago. I find it shocking to believe he's 81 years yeah, old. He, was, uh, uh, he was 37 when he made The Fog. Yep. Damn. Yeah. All right. Um, That's about right. Yep. Uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't find any pictures of young Tom Atkins. No, <laughs> no they don't. Exist. They yeah. don't exist. He, was, he yeah. was born old. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was, was Tom was. Atkins. Yeah. He is a singular person. Yep. Okay. He just had a, a force. He just yeah, had he a is a force <laughs> yeah. of the 80s yeah. that was just born. He just had a thinner mustache. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. All. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Mania Cop. Um, I, like I said, I, this movie is something that like has surrounded me, and I've like heard mentioned a bunch, and like I felt was somewhat hyped up because how much I'd heard it mentioned. Yeah, um, yeah but I, I really, really, really like Maniac. That's that's a, mm-hmm. I really enjoy that movie a lot. And the remake. And the remake. And the I remake like them both. Really I like good. them both a lot. Yeah, for different reasons, but I like them both. Um, and so I kind of went into this being like, okay. William Lustig has one idea. <laughs> that's fine. People you know, that's fine. You know, um, but I like, and for the first third of this movie, it felt very similar to Maniac. And I was like, okay, I'm fine with this. If it's literally just Maniac, but instead of just a random guy, he's a cop. That's fine with me. But then it took the weird supernatural turn and they didn't set any limitations. They didn't put any boundaries. They didn't give us any reason for anything. And that's a huge problem. That's just bad writing. That's bad storytelling. And it doesn't add up to a good payoff. And to me, like, that's when it lost me. Like, not only that, I was really hyped to see Bruce Campbell kill some people and be a bad guy for once. And then when it turned out it was a misdirect, I was 100% out. That was when I was like, all right, if Bruce Campbell. I forgot that you haven't seen this movie. 
Yeah, never seen it. So I was like, Bruce Campbell, holy shit, Bruce Campbell's gonna be the bad guy killing people. Especially because, you know, when we see the maniac cop in profile, he's got the similar chin of Bruce Campbell. So I was like, mm-hmm. holy shit, that's, he's gonna be killing people. No, he's not. It, it's all a misunderstanding, you know, uh, a mistaken identity, you know. Um, so I, I would not recommend it. I would recommend Maniac instead. Watch Maniac instead. And then if you like that, just stick with that because you've already seen everything William Lustig can do. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't recommend meeting a cop just because it, it really falls apart about two thirds through the movie and it, it, the payoff isn't good enough for the whole story. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with Colin on the notion that the, the bones are there, that it, the remake could be good. I think they could do something really great with this concept. Um, so I would definitely be interested in a remake this one. However, I, there was just too many holes. There's too many inconsistencies with the the storyline. Like you said, it wasn't good storytelling. The writing was not there. There was too many questions. I mean, you can have like a fun movie, but you have to fill in those holes. You you have to. And it just there was just too many too many questions for me. Um, and again, the payoff wasn't good enough. It if it had been like a really crazy looking maniac cop at the end, then it would have been an awesome reveal and it probably would have redeemed a lot of the movie. But there was just, it was too, there was too many scenes that it was just like felt like, I mean, besides the, the deleted ad in scenes, but (laughs) besides that, like the actual scenes, like there was too many that it felt like different movies being shown. It just, it didn't have a flow that, that I needed for the story. Um, yeah, there, there really wasn't much that that got my attention with this movie. I thought it was pretty boring, actually. I, I did love Atkins and Campbell, and I wanted more uh, more of them on screen. Like we said, more of them on screen together, just kind of playing off of each other. And I just it didn't give me any of the elements that I wanted. Like I didn't know anything about this movie, but when I found out who was in it, like the the short premise of it, it didn't have any payoff of what you would want from a movie with those two called Maniac Cop. It just didn't fulfill it for me. So yeah, I don't think I can recommend it. I think you could pass because it might be a disappointment for you. Sean. There it is. I think it's been said around the table. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, I think there's a lot of potential in this idea. I think that's why movies like this get uh, remade because I think the filmmakers that we're seeing nowadays watch these movies that we do now and they they see something interesting in them and they feel like they can add something new to them and they end up on the list of things that are being remade right now. Um, but there's a reason for that because I think they see something in these movies that is not quite. You know, all the parts don't add up to a whole. And I, I think I kind of agree with that. I think there's not... There's things missing from this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there's some enjoyable stuff, but other than that, I think they need to... There needs to be a, a, a definition of what exactly is going on in this movie. Exactly. Um, you know, tell me... You know, uh, again, like Colin said earlier, I think, you know, like... I don't need them to tell me exactly, you know what's going on in the movie, but I need a little more definition as it goes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this movie needs it. So I think it's right for a remake, but as far as this movie goes, I needed more. Um, I, I, I don't think I can recommend it. It's weird. Cause I don't think I can recommend this movie. I'm curious about the next. <laughs> Maniac because you're Cop? because you're Sean of sequels. Yeah. Because, but like, I'm, uh, but that's a thing. Like, He's a I've series been, guy, though. He'll go all the way. I will because I like. Him, but I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm always curious. What will a sequel? Because that's the thing. Like, it's almost like wondering what a remake will do with an original property. I'm just like, it's almost the same thing. What will a sequel do with the original property? What will they take from that original and add on to it and maybe develop more and keep going on from that? So, like, the sequels and remakes, they, I mean, they can interest me more. Um, this one, uh, it's not quite enough. I also need... It's a movie called Maniac Cop. I need more Maniac Cop. Yes. I need him yes. earlier in the movie because they don't... Like, we don't get to see his full face until way late in the movie. Like, not until the very oh, you're end. not saying it's... Because pre- there was, like, three scenes of him killing people, like, right. pretty much, but, you know, but, every but, other but, scene. And that was the best saying, part. That was the best the part of the movie, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, like, that reveal just happens, like, I think way too late in this. I'm like, I need more, like... They need to realize... They need to figure out what they're trying to do way earlier on in the movie because it doesn't feel like they do that until way later on. So I need more Maniac Cop 
earlier in the movie, and he didn't figure it out. Um, it's an odd movie because, like we said, the first like two thirds of it are it's like a thriller movie. It's like a whodunit mystery about you know cops mm-hmm. killing people and what's going on. But you know, as interesting as that can be, and I like the Tom Atkins parts of of that. Um, I, I think I need more of what we get in the later half of the movie way earlier on. Um, so I, I, I don't think I recommend, uh, Maniac Cop. Um, it's, like I said, it's weird because I want to watch Maniac Cop 2 and see what they do, but I don't think I can recommend this first one, um, to you out there. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it, there's not enough. It needs to be more. It needs mm-hmm. to go over the edge with the Maniac Cop. Yeah. If you're going to be called Maniac Cop, I need a Maniac. And I don't get that in this movie, so mm-hmm. I don't recommend it. Well, that's surprising. There it is. <laughs> I thought Sean was going to recommend mm, it too. But it's, okay. it's not quite <laughs> enough for me to recommend it. Can't do it. All right. Well, that means next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by... Holly. Me. <laughs> Thank you. I was drinking. So, Holly, what are we watching next I week? I also didn't know who was next week. <laughs> I thought you said you had this. I was, yeah. I, I, you I made think. declarations on the I, past. I'm like, after you. You, you came was, after you. So much shit you about pointing. You think I would know that. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Yeah, you it's gave me so much shit surprise. about pointing. <laughs> <laughs> but I will yell at you if you correct me. So, beware. <laughs> can't win with Sean. No. Yeah, no. You can't, no. really. So, what are we watching next week? Okay, so, believe it or not we are in Probably. the countdown for halloween we are less than 90 days to halloween yep. what, what are we the, what we the, are what yeah what is wow. the official 30 oh wow yeah, yeah we are yeah. less than less 90 than days, 90 days wow. to halloween we are. we're in so, the gravitational pull of the holiday yeah. we are so what we're doing is the next my next three picks are going to be movies of the undead the next well, the one we're starting with next week is dead alive Ooh, 1992 Ooh, awesome. peter jackson Awesome. It's going to be a gory schlock fest, and it's going to be awesome. That's mm-hmm. brain dead for you folks brain outside dead. the yes. United yep. States. Brain dead. <laughs> you'll love it either way. So, yep. our, our conversation, we don't know how we're going to uh, think about the movie. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wait, have you guys seen this movie? Yes. yes. I've seen a part of this movie. Lawn We all know what part we've uh, seen. Okay. Lawnmower. Kick-ass <laughs> the Lord. Oh, no. Okay, the other one. All right. Yeah. So...